Good evening, everyone. I see you talking, Pastor Houston. I see you. <laughs> Unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Good Welcome evening. to the ship. Good hey, evening. Charles, Amber, how are you all? Doing, doing good. Well. Doing well. Yeah. yeah. Doing well. How are you doing, Aisha? I'm good. I jumped in and started talking. I was so excited. So <laughs> I'm going to back up, slow down. And we love call. it. Let's nah, follow the call. Go ahead, Pastor Houston. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Hey, I'm, I'm excited to be here, too. You know, uh, I'm happy that you all are tuning in and worshiping with us tonight on The Shift. I'm excited about tonight. I think we have a great topic. Um, I think we have some amazing guests as well. But yeah. listen, Charles, you mind opening us up with prayer? Absolutely. Right, please bow your heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for just for life. God, thank you for uh, bringing us all together for another shift, Father. Father, you are all about relationships. You went to extreme limbs to be in relationship with us, Father, and you've blessed us with the opportunity to have relationships with one another. Father, as we talk about the relationship of marriage tonight, I just ask that your spirit come and just guide us and fill us with knowledge and wisdom, and we have some breakthroughs, and we have some understanding, and we and we get some wisdom from this discussion tonight. Father, marriage is a beautiful thing that you created. Mm -hmm. And we all want to learn how to be married and experience uh, its full glory, Father. So I ask as we get into this wonderful discussion tonight, Father, that you that you guide us, that you bless us. I ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Can I just can I just say, Charles, I love the vibe of your room. I thought it was darkness, but I think it's like a vibe. It's a vibe. Me. Yeah, it's a it's vibe. A vibe. Can you explain that to me. I like that. Yeah, Thank you. I just want to share that. Share that with. Thank you. Me. I appreciate yeah. that. Now, Nisha, <laughs> I feel a little way because I tried to do a vibe a couple of shifts ago, and you told me before the show you were <laughs> feeling it. I tried to do like the side angle, like I was like we were on a podcast. <laughs> We're supposed it's, to forgive and move on. It has to grow on it. It has to grow on it. I feel like you haven't forgiven and move on. But, but praise God. We're, we're, we're ready. We're ready yeah, tonight. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, well, as you all have seen, we're talking about marriage tonight. We're continuously talking about relationships. Last month, we talked about work relationships. Um, so this month, we're continuing that topic of relationships, and we're talking about marriage. And 
managing conflict within mm. relationships and marriage. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about this. So just to get our uh, our brains kind of thinking and moving tonight, we have some icebreaker questions for you. And they're surrounding relationships, they're surrounding marriage. And so we want you all to get active in the chat right now. All right. As we go through some icebreaker questions for you all. All right. So our first question for this evening. All right. Our first question for this evening is how many marriages involve remarriage? All right. Mm -hmm. How many marriages involve remarriage? All right. And here are your options. Is it four and ten? Is it three and five? Or is it five and ten? All right. Is it four relationships out of ten relationships? Is it five relationships? Uh, three relationships out of five relationships or five relationships out of two relationships. All right. So is that remarriage to one another or remarriage just to anybody? Remarriage to anyone. So you're like starting a new marriage, but you've been remarried before. You've been married uh, before. Uh, yeah, married you've been married before. before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's and like your second or more. Second, marriage. third, fourth, fifth. Okay. Right? Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you've been married before. All right. So okay. how many remarriages involve remarriage? New marriages involve. Yeah. How many new marriages involve remarriage? <laughs> I got it. I got it. What, what yeah. were the numbers again? All right. So we got four and ten. We got three and five or five and ten. Hmm. Yeah. What y'all think? Why are we getting the chat? Yeah. I, I, I've always heard. I think it's high. You think it's five and ten? Mm. That's okay. What, that's what most people are saying in the chat. So I'm going to go with the audience. Okay. Fifty percent. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I, I think so. I'm going to be yeah. optimistic and say four and ten. Okay. That's okay. The, that's the lowest uh, ratio we have. So okay. I'm going to be optimistic huh. and and try that okay. one. Oh okay. hi, Andrea. Long okay. Time. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So <laughs> Wendy says they're all high. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're all high. Okay. So the answer is according to Pew Research, four in 10 marriages involve mm. remarriage. 23% of married people have been married before, compared with just 10% in 1960. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so four in 10. Yeah. Four in right. 10. Yeah. Good job, Amber. Mm. Yeah. She just messed Optimism. Messed Optimism. I was that. just optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I got another one. I got another one. All right. What percentage of Americans say cohabitation is acceptable even if a couple doesn't plan to get married? Ooh. All right. Mm. What percentage of Americans say cohabitation is acceptable mm. even if a couple doesn't plan to get married? So, cohabitation, meaning living together. All right. Mm -hmm. So, cohabitation. So, there is no options for this one. All right. I just want to hear some numbers. Open. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be high, buddies, especially yeah. with you know the cost of living right now. Yeah, you know, right. I'm right. I'm just thinking it's going to be up there. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think yeah. I think I think it's more acceptable now than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm seeing high I'm numbers. Say Seventy percent. Oh, somebody say ninety percent. Yeah, I'm saying like not, someone said ninety percent. Ninety percent, Chris. Ninety-seven. Ninety. Okay. Can you last one of these up, Courtney. Aaron's eighty-seven percent. Eighty-seven percent. Okay. Ninety percent. Andreas says, "Wow." Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is there? Are they seventy-five percent? Seventy-five. Way. All right. So we get. We get. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll. I'll let you all know. It's high. It's a high number. I well, we, we knew that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Thanks for that hint, Pastor. I, uh, I love how people are giving ranges. It's 72 <laughs> They got to cover themselves. They got to cover themselves. Just got 80%. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So the correct answer is 69%. So yeah. 69 My mother has 60. So that's, I was pretty close. Yeah. Hmm. So 69% of Americans say cohabitation is acceptable. Another 16% says it's acceptable, but only if the couple plans to marry. And 14% say it's never acceptable for any unmarried couple to mm. live together. Yeah. Mm. Wow, only 14%. Wow. Yeah. Right. And this is research from Pew Research that was done back in 2019. Okay. Wow. 
yeah. I wonder if it would be higher right, even right before now. the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, right? These are pre-pandemic numbers. Pre-pandemic right? numbers. Right. I wonder what yeah. it is now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and one of the main reasons in the study was because of the cost of living. That was oh, that was mm. the highest reason. Yeah. yeah. And then the second reason was you get to know someone. Um, yeah, I've like heard that getting before. to know someone before you commit to marrying them. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Here's another one. Interesting one. What percentage of Americans ages 25 to 49 are living with their spouse and one or more children under the age of 18? Gosh. Ooh. All right. So what percentage of Americans ages 25 to 49 are living with their spouse and one or more children under the age of 18. This is another Pew research study that was done in 2019. So these probably have changed because they're pre-pandemic, but back mm -hmm. 2019. So what percentage of Americans ages 25 to 49 are living with their spouse and one or more children under the age of 18? Kenyatta can, said, can not a lot. Kenyatta's, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, hilarious. Like, you can't afford it. <laughs> Can't afford you, you speak the truth. Hey, hey, truth. it's hey. hard out here. Tell Don't you think 72. Okay. I mean, have you all seen the housing market here in Atlanta? Hello. I <laughs> can whole nother 76. Kenny's optimistic. Like, Kenny's up, look, Irma's oh, optimistic here. Hey, all right. I, and, and I was going to go. Okay. Okay. Ty says six. Hey, Ty. Ty says 60%. Okay. okay, I was gonna go mid range. I was gonna say like somewhere like around 52, 50 percent. Okay. Annie, fifty five percent. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, fifty percent. Okay. Nisha, were were you gonna say something? No, I was just gonna say groceries are expensive right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. that was my yeah. whole deep thought that groceries <laughs> are expensive. So yeah. no one has young yeah. children time for that right now. Mm -hmm. So. All right, so this is a study taken from actually 2021 by Pew Research. Okay. okay. It says 37%. Mm. So 37% of Americans yeah. ages 25 to 49 are living with their spouse and one or more children under the age of 18. Over the few past decades, the share has decreased. It was in 1967, it was 67%. Wow. Okay. So it has drastically decreased over the last 50 years. Mm. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Some, yeah, some I mean, people aren't having kids. Some people are, they're just with their kid and not, not a spouse. There's a lot of reasons mm -hmm. for that. One of the reasons in the study was the cost of living. Also, mm -hmm. continued education plays a role. Like, you know, uh, people are going to school for longer periods of time, yeah. um, which they're delaying to have children. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Last one. I got one more. I got one more. All right. So what percentage of marriage conflicts are never resolved? Ooh. This yeah. is a fascinating question. Do we have yeah. options for this? No, we don't. I just I just, just open ended. I just want to hear. Open ended? It. It's what interesting. What percentage of marriage conflicts are never resolved? Mm. It's interesting. I actually recently listened to a talk by Dr. Henry Cloud. He's the co-author okay. of the yeah, book Boundaries. Boundaries. And he actually talks about unresolved issues yeah. and how that's something we should learn to live with and how yes. mm. it's it's some something that couples who are happy like longer term, they learn to basically live with some things. Mm -hmm. You know, it just may not be resolved. It's fascinating. I wonder what yeah. you all think. What do the people think of a percentage of conflicts, though? Yeah. So is that a bad thing to have unresolved conflict? No, it's not. It's like it's kind of like, you know, your husband always leaves his shoes in the place you asked him not to. And, you know, you just can't resolve it. <laughs> you know, some <laughs> things are like they're like as yeah. simple as that. You know, it can yeah. be, you know, okay. and, so, and it's just like, you know, you're you always find yourself picking up those shoes and some people just they find a way to cope with it yeah. i feel like that was a little personal amber i felt like <laughs> i felt like they had felt something with that like it was direct i am not on the i am not on the panel tonight we're not talking yeah. about <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm just giving you an example it came it came too quick it came real quick <laughs> she, said shoes. she thought of nothing else but shoes 
Okay, so people in the chat are saying 30 percentage. See, Wendy, per, 30, see, Wendy, that's one of those things. Toilet seat see up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it has to be low because if it was high, folks, folks divorce. So I'm saying like 15 percent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Kenya is right. killing me. Okay. <laughs> All right, Michael Scott, 75 and a half percent. 75. He wow. gave it a half. Okay. Mm. Yeah, right. I think I think it's high. Personally, I think it's high. Yeah. Tracy's I'm gonna go on the low end. Okay. I have I'm no idea. Jesus breaks the cloud of glory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would go on the low end, honestly. Yeah. I would say like twenty mm, percent, something low. Twenty. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Steve Williams says fifty percent. Okay. All right. Y'all ready for the number? Yeah. yeah. All right. According to marriage counselor and family counselor expert, Dr. John Gottman, he's yeah. a well-known expert on well, marriage I knew it was up there. and relationships. Wow. He says 69% of marriage conflicts are never fully resolved. Never fully wow. resolved. Yeah, never fully resolved. Never fully resolved. Wow. Yeah. And so he, he makes the argument that, I mean, that's very natural for yeah. like your unresolved conflict throughout mm -hmm. the lifeline of a marriage but it's how you approach the conflict and how you all navigate that conflict yeah That's yeah important. yeah yeah I, I like Gottman's work I've read um one of his books too yeah yeah awesome so yeah some interesting interesting fact just to get our minds ruminating as we those were, those were a deep. wonderful conversation those were deep Pastor Houston I, I have no guesses whatsoever so those, those were very deep. <laughs> but before before I say goodbye to you all since we're talking about marriage I'm curious how long you all have been married since since we're talking about it tonight Amber yeah. how long have you and Jay has been married mm, 12 and a half years really uh, yeah uh, seven years this June seven Number of perfection. Yeah. Pastor Houston. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh we'll be four years, August 2nd. Wow. Those and are, you and Aisha? Are, thank you for asking. No, we'll be <laughs> we'll be 21 years. Hey. Awesome. Hey, Isn't that crazy? But anyway, I was just curious. That word marriage brings up a lot of different feelings, and we'll talk to you all about it afterwards. I'm gonna say goodbye to you all. Um, I'm excited tonight, and I'm always excited. And that's just a good thing because I love the shift. But tonight, I'm very, very excited because if you've been with us since January, you know we've been talking about, can't we all just get along? So we've been looking at relationships in different aspects of our lives. We've looked at um, relationships with other races or ethnicities or denominations. Um, last month, we looked at relationships with coworkers and how you keep those up. But tonight's going to be a little different because tonight, we're talking about married couples, married couples. Now, some of you, you just tuned out when I said that because you said, I'm not, I'm not married. That's okay. This conversation is for those who are married, those who have been married, those who plan to get married, those who know somebody who's married. This conversation is for everyone. I don't know if you all know, um, a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, the movie came out, Why Did I Get Married? You all remember that? It was Tyler Perry. And it followed the lives of four couples and the issues they were facing as married couples. Well, tonight, we don't have unhappily married couples to follow. We have some happily married couples tonight that are going to help us navigate um, issues that married couples go through and how we can deal with them in a healthy way. That's what we're going to do tonight. So I'm going to take this time. I'm going to bring out the couples that we have because I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. We can bring out all of them at the same time. These are some um, gurus of marriage. That's what I'll call them, gurus of marriage. Um, we're excited, y'all can unmute yourself if you if you can. These, these are the couples that we have been um, impressed to ask because number one, we just like them. That's, that's, that's the first thing, we just like them. But they, we feel like they can give us some good insight tonight into marriage. What happens in a marriage? What do you, how do you resolve conflict in a marriage? All those questions we're going to answer tonight. So we're going to start out introducing them. And I wish we could have played the newlywed game. I love the newlywed game where they add, you know, they ask you. <laughs> I, would, I wish we could play that oh, if we had time. Um, but instead, we're going to start by introducing, we're going to go from um, shortest period of time married to longest period of time. So that means the shortest, we're going to talk to Laurel and Patrick Williams. Um, now, please, please tell us with a smile on your face 
how long you all have been married? Uh, we've been married for ish months. We got married November 19th of 2023, so last year. Did y'all hear what they said? They said four ish months. Yeah, yeah. Because it's four and a half. We had this discussion earlier. So I said four, she said five, but okay. it's actually four and a half right now. So we can meet halfway. And so, conflict resolution. That's awesome. What has been the best, your favorite thing about marriage so far, Laurel and Patrick? Just oh, each of you, one thing really quickly. What's your um, favorite thing so far? Real quick. So we moved in together like two months after we got married. Okay. And so trying to figure out what left my studio apartment to go into her studio apartment where we both live in the studio apartment now. And so we, we threw out a lot of stuff, and that genuinely made me happy. If it doesn't bring you joy, it goes in the dumpster. There you go. <laughs> so throwing away things brought you joy when you got married. Uh, by the way, that's another conflict resolution. Tip. That's, that was conflict resolution. <laughs> Not We're really. Laurel, what, what's <laughs> the, your favorite thing so far? My favorite thing so far um, is how much he cooks dinner. Like literally having him at home, well, I mean, he's not always here when I get home, but having someone to share all of the domestics with. Like when mm. today I get got home late, he made dinner before we did this. And most nights he'll make dinner because I'm tired. And it's just like, <laughs> have someone to share that with, it's really nice. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. <laughs> that was that's a whole word right there. I yeah, think that's beautiful. <laughs> we're, we're only four and a half months in. Let's see how it goes. Good start. Good start. That's a good way to start. Yeah, that's a good way to start. Um, we'll come back to them. I like I like them already. Um, so we're gonna go to the more senior um married people who've been married at least over four months. Um, Gabe and Sydney Carter. Hello, you all. How many What's months have, how many months have you um Y'all been married? How many years? I'm sorry, years, months. So a little over a year, yeah. a little over a year. So we crossed that year mark. We were celebrating, and we're we're looking forward to many more. Yeah. Wow. Good answer, Gabe. Good answer. What, Sydney? What What was the first thing that drew you to Gabe? Like, what What stood out and made you say, "Hmm, I like him." Ah. Um, it's three things. Okay. Three yeah. things. <laughs> His kindness. Mm. 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 He has a very um calming spirit about him. Nothing mm. really ruffles him. Mm. And then I learned that it related to his just undeniable just peace that only God can give, right? Like, mm. I think that definitely was just very noticeable and, and made me wow. drawn to him. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now we're drawn to him. So <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Wow. Why is he at the top? No, no, that was that was awful. Um, I'm gonna I'm 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 let you say something, please. What, what drew you? What drew you to, to Sydney? She she had the mic drop moment, but honestly, um, her spirit is infectious. Like if you spend any amount of time with her, you leave brighter. So mm. for me, from the, the moment just kind of getting to know her through the whole process and the moment of even meeting her, I was just drawn to her spirit. Yeah. And I felt like if I can just spend a few moments with her and leave brighter, let me go ahead and, and, and lock this up and have a lifetime of, of brightness and, and good time. So I, I think that's one thing that stood out to me. Oh, this is good. This I, this is good. Wow. This, this is going to be real good. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. Um, <laughs> lastly, we're going to go to our senior citizens who have been married the longest out of, out of all of this group. Um, Steve and Shakina Williams, go ahead and tell us. How long you all have been married, please? 26, 26 years. years. Yeah. Wow. Do you, remember, yes. do you remember? Do you remember how you proposed? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was we had a neutral spot in Miami, in Miami Shores that we used to go to when we were just friends. And we would just hang out and talk to each other, kind of vent, um, share life stuff with. And it was my birthday. Mm -hmm. And we went back to that spot. Um, did we have something to eat? We had yes. something to eat. I and bought I bought him some um a Jamaican dinner. Dinner is right. There you go. Jamaican. So for his birthday, I bought mm -hmm. him uh Jamaican food. There mm -hmm. you go. And then we were there, and there had been a couple of times when we were dating that we'd kind of look across at each other, and that that awkward silence yeah. kicks in, and we're talking about dreams and goals and stuff like that, and always very supportive of each other's dreams. 
And I looked at her and the stars were perfect. And we're over water because Miami's were always around water. And I said, mm, nah. But that one day after that meal, I looked across mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted her in my life for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. wow. And I asked her to marry me and a whole lot of laughter, a whole lot of screaming and eventually yes. And <laughs> and it's that. been it's been great since. 26 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I love I love the range of what we have here tonight because we're going to get different responses, which are all good. Mm -hmm. There's no experts here. We're all together on this journey of marriage. So let, let's let's get started. Um, when if you had to define or describe marriage in a mm -hmm. few words, what would you say? Like if, if someone actually, what is marriage mm -hmm. how is it different than any other human relationship what words would you use to describe or define marriage we always like to start by explaining things on the shift so so how would you, marriage is what anybody hmm. I, I would throw out for me it's been a lifetime walk with your best friend mm -hmm. Wow, a lifetime a, walk with your best it's friend. A, it's a commitment to let's let's figure out this journey together with my best friend. Mm. That's that's what it's been for. Mm. Well, that's good. That's good. Now, do, I'm, I was going to throw something out there as a catch, Steve, but I, I'm I'm not going to start this early. Um, <laughs> not this early. Not this let's early. give it a minute. <laughs> I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give it some time. Not controversial yet. Anyone mm. anyone else? What when you think of marriage? And in the chat, put. Put your response. When when you hear that word marriage, what comes to mind as marriage is this? Patrick. I'll, I'll, or okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll start calling people. Yeah. I'll say something. So um kind of piggybacking off Steve is like a process of becoming, right? The Bible mm -hmm. talks about becoming one. And I think sometimes you feel like after you leave, you know, the wedding venue, you're supposed to already be there, but I think it's such a process of learning and becoming and becoming a good husband, becoming a good wife, becoming, you know, those life partners and, and best friends and all those things. So I would say a process, a beautiful process of becoming. Mm. Do you ever reach a point where the process is complete? No. Death. No. no. Probably not. No. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. You're right. I don't want to see that day. So right. no. as long as you're moving, you're alive, yeah. So mm -hmm. we, want, we want to keep it an active verb, like yeah. becoming. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I like I mean, someone that said in the chat, it's a university you never graduate from. That's good. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Always learning. I was going to say the same thing about that university piece. I feel like um, every day that I'm with Florel, I learn something new about her and love her in a different, in a new way. Right. Oh, and yes. so I'm um, constantly, and we put this in our vows, falling in love with each other every day with every new piece of information that we learn. Oh, we fall in love all over again, but also we become one person. Just, I mean, in some ways, I mean, it's only been four and a half months, but um, I, I feel like we begin to understand each other so well where she knows what I'm thinking. I know what she, and like literally to become one, but in the way that we're just constantly learning, but also appreciating each other, which is why I mentioned like the whole moving in together and throwing stuff out. I got to see what was important to her and mm. what stuff she didn't care about. So just that whole process of learning stuff all over again, it was just a blast. It's so um, two to one, yeah. So, so I like that. Do you, in marriage, do you learn more about the other person or do you learn more about yourself? Both. Oh, I learned more about myself. Both. <laughs> okay, so I see. I see. Chikina said both, and Sydney mm -hmm. said herself. Yeah. Both. Chikina, why? Why would you say both? Well, um, for instance, um, Patrick mentioned, you know, about learning and continuing mm -hmm. to learn. Even, you know, we're twenty six years in, and I just yeah. learned something about him a couple of months ago, and it blew my mind. Simple. And <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm sitting there. I'm like, what do you mean, red velvet cake is not your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I it like, blew my what? mind because every time we go out and we we mm. order i'll order some for him here babe mm. here's your favorite and one day he just said well babe it, you know it's really not my favorite <laughs> <laughs> it took you 26 years steve it blew my mind, years, it blew my mind. i want to crush dreams you know right. so, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, so you're I, learning you I were learned, learning about yourself and yes, because I realized it, it was me that loves red velvet cake. 
So it wasn't mm-hmm. his favorite. I loved it. And I'm like, we should, oh. we should hang on that for a little bit. No, yeah. hang, hang you on. have to unpack that a bit. You know, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Or perhaps, yeah. perhaps he was eating it because he knew you loved it. See, maybe, maybe yeah. he was doing it for you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, maybe. <laughs> You, you said, Sydney, you said you, you're learning more about yourself in marriage. I think in this, you know, in, in this phase of being newlyweds, I'm definitely, you know, when you're single, you know, you really just have your friends and your loved ones to tell you kind of who you are and you're by yourself, you're in your own thoughts. Um, when you have someone with you every day and you realize similarly, like, I don't even know if this man likes that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. You realize the things that you really think are important versus mm. what you're pushing on someone because you think they're important. You think mm. they should be important to him. Mm. Um, and so wow. I agree. I'm learning so much about him, but through learning about him right now, I'm realizing like, who I need to be better at that. Or, you know, it's kind of like a mirror. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. a mirror. I, I would never call myself selfish, but that was very selfish of me to do, you know? <laughs> you know, because you wouldn't pick up by yourself. You definitely, for me, I'm picking up being married um, to Gabriel. And I think that's beautiful because I'm becoming better because of it. Beautiful, beautiful. So so I saw somebody in the chat said, Gabe and Sid are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so, okay, so I've heard people say, especially nowadays, that marriage is overrated. Marriage is old fashioned. What would you say to someone who said, you know, it's too old fashioned. We don't really need it anymore. Mm-hmm. How, what would you say to them if they said marriage is just like overrated? How would you reply to that? Oh. <laughs> I think would I would. Wanna, would you reply to that? I if think I want to understand what kind of, are, are we talking about spiritual, the person, are we talking about spiritual marriage or like marriage is defined in society, right? Is marriage just signing the certificate? In which case, maybe that is over it, but like the spiritual union of two people, that's entirely different, right? And so I want to understand like what kind of marriage, quote, quote, are they talking about? Because at least for me, the spiritual piece, I mean, that's timeless. Like to, to find, um, that that one person that is everything to me. I mean, um, that that that's timeless. That doesn't really go down south. And I think Patrick, some people don't differentiate. They yeah. just put out the word marriage. They're yeah. not thinking, oh, the spiritual. Oh, here's the civil. No, it's just marriage. Mm-hmm. It's one word. But I, I hear what you're saying. Like, what what do you tell them? Yeah. What do you if tell I'm, them? You know what? Go ahead. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. If I had to choose between being in a relationship where I couldn't really trust or fully trust someone or be myself because we haven't committed, you know, ourselves Mm -hmm. to, you know, each other in that sense and committing myself to someone that I can fully trust and fully, you know, just be myself. I'm going to choose, you know, the, the, the security of a committed relationship through marriage where I can be myself. I can be, um honest and we can like um the the, the guys have already mentioned we've all mentioned about that journey if i can Mm -hmm. choose someone that's on that journey of life to you know just to travel whether it's kids buying houses getting pets or whatever i'm going to choose the journey with someone that i can trust through Mm. marriage Mm, i like that Mm -hmm. i I saw um can you flash back up what you know me morris said Mm -hmm. I, i like what they said the fantasy of marriage is overrated what does that what does that mean what do you think they're saying the fantasy do you think people have a picture of marriage that maybe is not true in their minds and that's why they're saying it's overrated absolutely yeah i would i would especially um say that i think this when they say the fantasy of marriage is this oh i'm gonna find the one person more or less in this world that's gonna be my perfect match we're gonna have no arguments or, or we're gonna be in love with them every single day without doing the work. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be like, you know, rainbows and butterflies every single day. You know, it's gonna financially, we both are gonna be working to support each other, you know, all of the good things that people think marriage is. And yes, marriage is all of those things. It can be absolutely wonderful, but it is not without its work. Yeah. And so I think when people say the fantasy of that is they're thinking um outside of having to to do the work and knowing that I'm an imperfect person, my partner's an imperfect person, 
only God can bring us together and help us be able to love each other and work with each other. And again, every single day is work, but I think the fantasy is what people, it's like once that week or two or hot honeymoon phase wears out, it's kind of just like, oh, now I don't love this person anymore. When love yeah. wasn't, it's a commitment every day. It's not just a feeling, right? It's not just yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Disney that. Movie. <laughs> I, like, I like it. I like it. Gabe, I see you were about to say something. Yeah, and I really like what, what um, Patrick has said a little bit earlier about that timeless piece. I think sometimes we're always looking for something new or you know something modern, but sometimes something isn't outdated or antiquated. It's just timeless, right? There's some things that will last, you know, the span of time, right? Like I, I love that you know concept. I think Patrick was pointing out that this thing has been around for a while, and there's a reason for that. There's something special about it. In, in terms of why it continues to roll generation after generation. So I, I like that concept of it being timeless, not just timeless, but timeless, right? I like that. And and something, Laurel, you said that if you go in there thinking there's no conflict, that can really mess with your mind. So I've heard this statement, and you all tell me whether you agree mm -hmm. or disagree with the statement that conflict can be normal and even healthy for a marriage. Do you agree or disagree with that? I'll say it again. Conflict can be normal and even healthy <clears throat> for a marriage. Do you agree with that? I conflict can be healthy for marriage? I think it put conflict, not arguments, but conflict, I think, can help you grow. It's like, you know, we, even with the us moving in, like he wanted to throw things away. And it's just like, yeah, actually, I do need, there are things I need to take care of, but also it's like, we had a conflict with it. But, <laughs> but I think it wasn't an argument. It was a place for me to help for me to grow and have so, him. So grow, I'm but. glad you said that, Laurel, because someone is asking in the chat right now, wait a minute, what's the difference between conflict and arguing? Aren't they the same thing? What are they? Are conflict is a conflict, the same thing as an argument. And I'll, I'll tell you why, because in the beginning, when my husband and I first got married, I felt like everything that was different about us was an argument and I didn't want to get into it. Like, oh no, this is bad. We're arguing when it really was simply a disagreement or conflict. How do you know the difference between if something is a conflict, Sydney, or if it's a full fledged argument? Do you think? No, that's a really good question. Um, I I do believe that there's a difference, um, but I think something that's a con <laughs> there's levels. I mean, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like. We've got to recognize like there's levels to arguments and there's re re levels to conflicts. Yeah. Um, and you can have a conflict every day if you want to have a conflict. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. did you put the top on top of the toothpaste? Are you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did you pick up your sock? You know, these are small little conflicts. But then there are things that really, um, what's the word? I would just use tr triggering, right? Mm. That could just add to something that's already existing that you're not solving. Okay. I think okay. for me, you know, sometimes that can start an argument. It's something mm -hmm. that ne needed to be talked about beforehand. Mm. Um, and it's now gotten to the point where now we right. are raising our voices in certain, in certain, in certain ways. So. Understood. 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 And it's, it could be cultural too. And I'll say this. Oh, go ahead, Kate. No, I just wanted to say, I, I, I think for me, the way I see it is conflict is just the fact that we're on different sides of something. But mm -hmm. argument is more about how you respond to conflict. So yeah. I, I would say too, that thinking back on what my wife was saying, I think the argument is a response, right? Like, mm -hmm. how do I respond to conflict? I can either respond through argument, or I can respond through um, talking and, and figuring out how do we, you know, understand each other's viewpoints. So I would say conflict doesn't always have to lead to argument, but you know, the argument is a choice in how you respond. So I that's good. That. That's good. I like that. I like that. Steve. I wanted, I kind of, kind of want to add something. So when we were engaged, um, I think I was um, still in school. I was doing a business course in operations management application. There was a conflict resolution um, item that you could use to help solve any conflict. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was a conflict that needs two people, a minimum of two people. And what it did was it's called a, con a conflict cloud. And it, it's two lines of different train of thought. Mm -hmm. And what was central to that train of thought, notice where I'm saying I got it from. It, this is from a business school. Mm -hmm. And they said a conflict has two different points, but the key to, re to the resolution is that you both agree to the, the end game. Mm -hmm. You both agree to where you're headed. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Okay. So um, for a class assignment, um, they asked us to do something. And what I did was I asked my wife and I, well, my fiance at the time, what we looked at was at the end of our life, what is our goal? Mm. End of our life, what is our goal? And we, through lots of conversation, all kind of stuff, we ended up with, I want to make it to heaven. Mm. So no matter what our decision is in that mm. conflict, no matter what that our decision is, that point of conflict, if at the end of it, we just want to make it to heaven, it takes the emotion out yeah. of the resolution process. Interesting. And, and it's been sort of a key that I use in everything that I do, but especially it dawned on me when we did that program, how much thought she had on the simplest conversation mm. and how much I may disagree or agree. We were passionate about it. And I realized this thing could turn into an argument. Yeah. I don't, let's just buy the flip toothpaste mm -hmm. top. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You know what? So, so, Steve, Steve. so I could just toss it. So it Steve, though, you, you, I like how you, you said something as simple as a toothpaste cap or whatever, but mm -hmm. what are, what are, and I'm going to ask these specifically to each of you. What are the top three areas that you might have conflict in? Oh, I got to go. Somewhere. In marriage. <laughs> now, you don't have to go all deep into your business. We're not trying to find out, you know, your financial situation. What, what for, for you all, what have you found? And I'll, I'll give you one of mine. Initially, when my husband and I first got married, it was communication. Because I'm American, he's Jamaican. So I felt like everything he was saying was too loud. Like every argument, I'm like, why, why is he yelling at me? And he's like, I'm not yelling. He's like, I'm just talking because that, that was his foundation. That's where he came from. He heard more boisterous talking where I heard kind of calm, soothing. So it's all in perception. That, that was a serious source of conflict for us. I said, please stop yelling at me. He's like, I'm not yelling at you. So that, that was a source of conflict. So give me, give me one or two areas of conflict that you found. Whoever bravely wants to start. Laurel and Patrick, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Y'all are looking at each other. So I'm looking at you. Um, yeah, I, I'm very sentimental, so I I also have a lot of clothes and shoes, and so uh, that's definitely a point of conflict because my husband is a minimalist and I am a maximalist. <laughs> okay. That's definitely okay. one. <laughs> Patrick, is that also yours, or what is what is one that you would say? Um, That's probably it. I mean, not necessarily about clothes or stuff like that, um Laurel likes to hold on to everything like we'll, we'll have like receipts from last year I'm like what are we do what are we doing with these receipts in case I want to return something I'm like but it's a year later so <laughs> so we have different perspectives on uh, sentimentality and objects that are dear to us so. Un understood understood well said Gabe Sydney and y'all can put it in the chat what are some areas that you all have <clears throat> Gabe sitting, you all been together like a, a whole married a whole year. Over a year. What, what what are some areas possibly that you're having to deal with? And you don't have to go into detail, but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, well, I have the um, unique spiritual gift of being able to go to sleep with dishes in the sink. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, my wife does uh, not, not agree with that spiritual gift. <laughs> so... Just overall, how we just operate in the house and what's dirty, what's clean, and we're still learning that. I'm finding myself picking up stuff a lot more, not because I think it's dirty, just because you know I want my wife to have a pleasant experience. Yes, in the house that we share. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. beautiful. Sydney, what what what's an area for you? Um, for me, I I think he. he, <laughs> he, he <laughs> also, you know. Um, you know, I'm hearing things that we actually are working through in, in every box on this screen from each couple. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody has a little bit of, you know, right, some of those right, right. things. But um, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think we're learning how to navigate um, just being comfortable in our space together. And that sometimes mm -hmm. yeah. means that I can't be extreme. I'm extreme minimalist. Um, and I'm like tossing everything away. And he comes home, he's like, this thing was right there in that corner. And I'm like, what? What thing? What thing? Right. I'm cleaning it already. Who knows what that thing is? Right. I don't know where it is. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, I know where it is in the trash. But right. Yeah. It's in the trash. <laughs> oh, and if you took the trash out, you know, 
<laughs> Let me tell y'all this. I'm not going to try to take up all the time, but one time I had poured myself some water. I went to the restroom. I came back. The glass was gone. I didn't know what happened to it. I, if I want anything, I got to take it with me. <laughs> the water was gone. Wow. 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 Oh, that's funny. We're both stretching each other yeah. and oh. uh, meeting each other in the middle. But yeah, we were we're working oh, on that. Was <laughs> that was good. That was good, Gabe. He just wanted some water, and the water was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Chiquita, what? what? <laughs> we're sitting here, and we're, we're sitting here thinking. I'm like, okay, 26 years. Okay, well. When we first started, can we navigate like in the beginning or like sure. now? Whichever. Well, Go Steve, ahead. you give me yours on the top of your head, and then Shakina, you give me yours off the top of your head. From okay. whatever that, you know, that age or era. Um, in, in her space, I grew up with two other brothers. I'm going to let that sink in for a little bit. There was a lot of flexibility in your, from socks to underwear to, there was a lot going on. And for her, things had to be in place. It had to be kind of structured. Kind of Why the blinds open? And that used to drive me nuts. Um, and then, and, and, and one other thing was input and, and I guess it's a little serious input. My wife is an avid reader. Mm. Not that I don't read, but she's an avid reader okay. and I'm big on whatever you put in needs to be spiritual so that you have spiritual come out. That was one thing that we were big on. And that was like a contentious issue at first. Cause she's like, Oh, these novels are okay. Or it's not okay. And I'm like, nah, that's like having people in your in your relationship we need to read stuff that's going to feed to it so that i felt kind of introduced to a whole lot of other stuff that was happening in the house and how we thought up things and how solutions would come up was a data input bad data output gotcha okay okay chiquita same um i'm I'm trying to think of uh i guess the little things like you'll have the hamper and his clothes would end up outside of the hamper not in the hamper um, <laughs> or the hamper is there and it's laying across the hamper. So as I'm walking, oh, hold on. Oh, as I'm walking by, if something. it's if it's lying across the hamper, it's going in. I'm just gonna go boop. So it then he'll come been. back. And he's like, "Well, where's that shirt that I I just laid it out?" I had. I'm just like, for a "Oh, it was on the hamper. Just for a Therefore, it's in the hamper now. It wasn't it was in just, the hamper. Oh no." So it but, you know, dirty. just just little things like that, or um, you know, take it to the kitchen. Um, and, and if he's cooking, praise God for the cooking husband. Woo woo. Yeah. But um, if there are napkins in this corner, oh, okay. that corner, okay. uh, you know, I go kind of go and I'm collecting and put them. In. So he's looking around. Where was, is that I was napkin? Using that. Okay. You know? So that's okay. Up. So I'm so somebody who's watching right now are saying, oh, those are small things that you all disagree mm-hmm. yeah. on. Yeah. Is are there any deal breakers? Well, like can, I, can I, I saw someone in the chat ask this earlier. They're saying, okay, you know, those are small things. I can live with those, but are there any deal breakers? And I'm not saying that your spouse has done these. We know they haven't, but anything that you're just like, mm-mm. Well, well, can I say this? The, the, mm-hmm. what, what I've found in the 26 years, because I mentioned stuff and, and I had to decide, was it stuff in the beginning or is it stuff now? And if we weren't talking about those small things in the beginning, Mm-hmm. They tend to pile up and they, yeah. and we tend to hoard them. Okay. Yeah. And before you know it, that conflict that's turns true. into an argument because you're yeah. busy hoarding mm. and you're not being completely transparent about what seems sim- simple. But listen, that clothes over the hamper, that was eating her alive. And to yeah. me, it was simple. But if I approached it like it was simple forever, we wouldn't be at 26. Because mm. then that clothes over the hamper can turn into, oh, She's trying to control me. Sure. That's so, interesting. You know, I, I know I left it there. Why did you move it? You know, it, it yeah. could it can be as simple as that. That 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 toothpaste. It really does. You know, why are we spending money on a separate tooth um toothpaste when we can share? Well, in order for us to have a happy home, we need we separate, two separate toothpaste. Gotcha. <laughs> separate wash. bottles of mouthwash. Yes, sir. You know, that, that could be that could be, you know, yeah. a problem in some homes because why I'm are we spending so much money? And, I'm a chug. And I'm not gonna do that. So I, I need my own. Mm-hmm. You know, so like like Steve mentioned, it starts off small. It starts yeah. small now. But it can it can be, you know, mm-hmm. light to a bigger issue. 
Yeah. You know, like maybe I was used to a certain thing as a child and I'm not going to have that mm -hmm. done again in my home. So I make these little changes or mm -hmm. I want my home to be a certain way. And mm -hmm. either my, my husband is, is fighting against the grain and I'm like, well, well I want it this mm -hmm. way. And, and you sure. know, so we, we, we're coming in. Those conflicts are because we're both individuals and we're coming yeah. in with our, mm -hmm. our how we were raised different cultures. I'm American. He's Jamaican. We're right. coming in with how we were raised and things. And, and <laughs> if we let sometimes how we were raised take over mm. and, and into the home that we're trying to build, that and create, yeah. can grow from the little to yeah. pay to from what, from what you see. And it doesn't take yeah. long to get there. Yeah. 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 Um, Laurel Gabe. Yeah, I was getting ready to, I was going to say, um, to answer the the deal breakers, deal breakers. Question, because I also hear you, um, Stephen Sh Shakina, mm -hmm. um, about the small things just building up. <laughs> but um, I would have, I would have said before we got married that cheating was always on top of my list of the highest, just absolute deal breakers. Mm. Um, but then after our counselor, um, I think that there, I think deal breakers should be before marriage. But after marriage, I don't believe wow. they're true. Mm -hmm deal breakers. I think wow. that there are situations with which may be almost seemingly impossible to get over. Mm. Um, and again, I think I think there are some cases where you know your your safety is at is at risk and that's a huge deal. Um, so like you know abuse or like if Patrick tried to kill me, I think that maybe <laughs> you have a deal breaker even still I think yes, maybe remove yourself to a safer space. But prayer is power. Wow. And I think once you have made those vows, I don't think at that point there are any deal breakers. Mm. Wow. Prayer. And I think that there is more prayer and, and understanding and dealing with it. And again, this, I don't think for everyone listening, I don't think that's me obviously not giving Patrick a pass mm. to cheat because I will be. But then you have to do it. No, but I, but I think it's really truly saying go through those deal breakers and talk about those things beforehand. Cause when <laughs> I do, it is, I think I just for life is commitment that you made with God and that other person. And I think it is. That, that was a whole, <laughs> that's a whole word, Laurel, what you just said. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that was, I mean, coming from four mm -hmm. months of marriage, that was a whole word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like deal breakers should be before mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. Once you say I do, you know, all things are possible. With so to give a bit of context, so both Laurel and I were previously engaged where um, and our engage, both our engagements fell through. Um, my partner was physically abusive. And so that's a hard deal breaker for me. I'm mm -hmm. like physical abuse, safety, I'm out. Um, and I let Laurel share her story, but like there was a deal breaker there kind of like pre-marriage. And so they ended. And so when we found each other, we said, you know, we both had had our like hard limits breached. And so coming together, we had a conversation like these are our limits. These are the things that we know would trigger the other person. Mm -hmm. And like, let's just go nowhere near that at all. Wow. Mine was cheating. So. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Gabe, Sydney, anything you want to add real quick to that? Um, no, I will. You know, I'm just taking in everything that Patrick and Laurel said. So um, but what, what I was thinking was just simply, you know, what me and Gabe ask each other every day is how can I love you more today? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and it's you know when in marriage it's an everyday thing mm -hmm. like your day to day it's not always going to be just like this fantasy that we were talking about before it's like Sid how can I love you more like today love looks like filling my cup by cleaning the dishes or mm -hmm. doing this or you know just different things today love looks like babe and Gabriel cooks and I love that but he's just like. I'm in legislative session, you know, can you help me with this, this, and this? And that's going to make me feel loved. And I think, you know, sometimes when we talk about deal breakers, I agree with you all about, you know, there, there are no deal breakers, except for, of course, abuse and things like that. But there is a way to deplete your marriage and there's a way to pour into it Ooh, and to be intentional about, intentional about pouring. Um, you don't really walk around depleted. Because that that right there, you'll think is a deal breaker, mm -hmm. and it's really not. You just haven't been pouring into each other. Wow! Um, and to listen to that, you know, listen to that's your good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. That's good. No, I mean that was that was beautiful, and I I just love 
the whole conversation, but even the parts about how we started off is like, it seems like little things, but those little things are so important. And I think for me, once me and Sydney, once I was able to hear her and understand how those little things actually made her feel loved and heard and seen and all that stuff, Mm -hmm. it changed my paradigm because at first it's like, oh man, like, is that, is it that big of a deal? But hearing how those things made her feel, it's like, oh, like I want to make my wife feel this way. I want, I Mm -hmm. I want my wife to feel loved and seen and heard. Mm -hmm. So this is how she's telling me that she, you know, a couple of the ways that, you know, she's telling me she feels that way by Mm -hmm. these things. I was like, yeah, like, why not do that? You know, if that's how she's telling me she feels. So I love that concept of, Little things matter, right? Those small oh, things. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> y'all, y'all, it's, it's, go ahead, Chikina. Nice, I'm so sorry. I just mm-hmm. want to piggyback. Um, Sydney said a key word, and that was intentional. Intentionality. Mm-hmm. And I would say for Steve and I, this is our season of intentionality. Mm-hmm. We are empty nesters. Our kids are both away at college. And mm-hmm. children, they are such a blessing, but they can deplete you as an individual, they can deplete you as a couple. Yeah, I choose to be intentional with Steve. Mm-hmm. We pour into each other. Sydney, you're 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 right on it. When you said those things, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. that's exactly where we are. We choose to pour into yeah. each other. I and yes, I choose you today. Yeah, mm-hmm. look at him. Uh, that intentionality <laughs> is every day. It's it's yeah. from four months of marriage. One year, 20, 30, 50, you have to be intentional in everything. And I just, wow, that you, you hit, you hit, you know. y'all, y'all are preaching and I don't know how we got to eight o'clock already. Let me, let me give you one last question. And each of you just give me your, your brief response if you can. Um, if someone were to say, I don't know if I wanna get married. I don't know if it's for me. What would you tell them is the secret to a happy marriage? Hmm. What would you, to you, what would you say, here's the secret to a happy, and you can do it within the context of Christ or not. It's whatever is a secret to you. What is the secret for a happy marriage? And well, let me, let me start with um, Steve and Shakina. 26 God years. Go ahead. No, you go. Both Godly. of you. Godly say, friendship. Godly friendship. Mm-hmm. Meaning. Like very, a very deep, godly friendship. I study a lot about what God meant to me, the sacrifices that he made, the intention that he made. I love it. Romans said that while I was yet a sinner, mm. he laid on the cross for me. While I was doing dirt, it didn't say that I had been forgiven. It didn't say that I hadn't had enough sense to ask for forgiveness. He said that I love you enough to lay down my life for you. So if I'm going to emulate the very thing that he instituted in the first, in the beginning, I need to be so in love with him and then just allow that to overflow Mm. into her because every little thing kind of gets at you. Every little thing kind of annoy you. The simplest thing, you'll be having a bad day. Got nothing to do with what your spouse came home and said. And they just, for some reason, I I remember watching something. I'm going to try to be quick. And the person said, "I, I can smile outside with other people, but when I come home, I need you to let me be me. Wow. And and the other person said, no, I need you to fake it with them like you faked it with me. Why do I not deserve for you to put out extra effort? And that thing blew my mind. And and so for me, that godly friendship makes it natural for me to just find ways to love her more in the moment. Beautiful. Shakina, secret of a happy marriage, what would you say? For me, it is finding contentment and being mm. loved by God alone. Mm-hmm. And this and that kind of that prepared me for marriage from the very beginning. It's like believe and be satisfied. I don't know how many of you have heard of that poem, but it wasn't until I realized that I can be content and loving myself for how God has made me and what he has done for me. And in that, I will be able to love him. Mm. I had to realize that, oh, I am satisfied with how God loves me and that he loves me. Therefore, I can love him because God's going to give me everything that I need to love him. Mm. So if I'm not content, I'm coming in messy in these relationships because I think my husband's going to make me happy. If I'm not happy, how can I be happy for him, for us, for our, mm. for our children? So for me, the secret is that that inward contentment when, as it aligns with God's will in my life. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Sydney, Gabe, what, what do you all say? 
if someone were to ask each of you, secret for a happy marriage, what, what would you tell them? Um, <laughs> every I, I was just about to say, you know, everything that was just mentioned before is exactly where I'm at. But, um, I, you know, I'll just add that, you know, contentment and just being extremely happy mm -hmm. with where you are, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're trying to figure it out and to do as much if you're single, do as much internal work as now that you have the time. Mm. Work on yourself, love yourself, take yeah. care of yourself, yeah. build yourself up. And I, you know, one thing I, I, I have noticed is that when you're single, you're trying to get married. And when you're married, you're trying to deal with the, when you're single and you're on that journey, figure out you and, mm. and love that and enjoy that. Because when you're filling yourself up, when it's time to get married, that marriage is going to be right. awesome. You're going to be whole. You're going to be satisfied. You're going to have your own relationship with God. You get to share so much with your partner and it makes us that, that much beautiful. And I think that's what's definitely taken us, given us the joy that we have now as God. And then we worked on each other, on ourselves separately. Yeah. Mm, I love that. I love that, Sydney. And just a plug for last month's um, uh, sermon series, The Knights Did on Contentment, mm -hmm. if you have not watched it. Please go back and watch. I think it was the whole first part of March on contentment. I just thought about that when you said that. Uh, Gabe, anything? No, that's great. I mean, that's exactly where I was going. Is like for me, the secret to a happy marriage is choosing to be in a happy marriage, right? Like that's a choice you can make, right? Every day to choose to learn the person you're with that God has given you, choose to voice your needs and, and things of how you feel love, choose to harp on the things that you love about that person, you appreciate about that person, and not just think about all the things that um, you may disagree with. It's like, those are choices that you can make. So I think that like, it's not a, you know, you found this person in some like special way. I think it's like, this is the person God has given you. Yeah. Are you gonna choose to be happy? Or are you gonna, you know, choose to not invest in your marriage and, and find yourself in, in a place where you're not happy. So it's, I a, think choice. It's, a, choice. it's a choice. It's a choice. Um, last but not least, Laurel and Patrick. And I don't want to say you've just been married four months because that's a long time. Nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Now, now um, nowadays, four, four weeks is a long time. So yeah. God, you <laughs> all have obviously learned something by now. So what would you say, even at this <laughs> stage, that is the secret. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm big on curiosity. The same way we should be curious about, like, mm -hmm. the Word of God and like, like, um, intentional in how we study the Word. We should be intentional about our curiosity towards our partner and mm -hmm. our partner being their whole selves. And so I think of Laurel. I I literally want to know everything about her. I'm curious about why she keeps this receipt and not the other one or why she does. So I'm just so curious. And that, that seems, that that seems to get you, doesn't it? I, I'm, yeah, I'm really just just as a simple there. example, but <laughs> the curiosity, like I, I always want to know about her and I always want to understand and kind of be there for her and, um, and curious about her and her relationship with God and her relationship with herself. And so that allows me to um, love her. And it goes back to what Sydney said about the whole self. Yeah. Like she's a whole person and I'm curious yeah. about everything that makes her a whole person. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Laurel, you have um, the last word, Laurel. <laughs> love it. No, <laughs> um, I would say simple grace. Um, and an easy example of that would just be not assuming um, or assuming that everything that my partner is doing is out of love for me. So even if it is, oh, you know, I'm trying to get ready and like the light is still on, you can turn the light out. It's not that, you know, I'm assuming, oh, you didn't want to help me, you didn't ask me. It was, he thought I need the light to to fix myself, myself or do whatever I needed to do. And so I think pausing and giving my partner grace before I just assume automatically that they did it to annoy me or they're just not thinking of me. I think, um, again, extending absolute 100% grace and taking a step back and just knowing that whatever my partner is doing, um, it's not to hurt me. Obviously, I've married this person for a reason, right? And so yeah. like just communicating, hey, this can be done better in the future. But again, just pausing and giving grace and saying, I love this person. So like, how do we move forward? Grace. I love it. Good, good word to end on, Grace. Um, everyone, wa everyone watching, I want you to look at these couples and I want you to know that marriage can be beautiful. Marriage can be wonderful. Marriage is a blessing from God. Don't fall trapped to the culture saying, oh, it's no big deal. I don't need it. No, God can make it a wonderful thing as he can make singlehood a wonderful thing. Yes. Wherever you are, there with be content. 
that that's what he wants for you. So we're going to bring out um, Amber to say a prayer for us and Pastor and Charles. Good conversation, honest conversation. Um, we appreciate all of you all being so candid and so real. And so tonight we're going to ask um, Amber just to pray for not just the couples here, but for those who are watching in the chat. Um, some people right now are in a time in their marriage where they're not really seeing the sunlight. Right now, there's an eclipse in their marriage. And right now, all they see is darkness. We're going to pray that God releases that and that he gives them hope again and love again and restores all that the enemy has tried to take from the marriage. So, Amber, if you can just remember them, them in prayer, those who are watching, um, those who will watch, that God would keep our marriages. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's pray. Lord in heaven, we are so thankful, so thankful that you are love and that you created each of us in your image. We are so thankful that you established, uh, like, like Charles prayed earlier, relationships, that you have drawn us to you and you have drawn us to one another, that you created us to function in relationships. And so we just thank you for the gift that relationships are. We thank you, like Laurel mentioned, for your grace, for your grace that is greater than all our sins, for your grace that shows us how to extend grace to others. Lord, we are thankful. Lord, we're thankful for these wonderful couples that have come tonight to share in, about their relationships, to share wisdom that you have given them thus far, um, to be so real with us and so honest with us. Lord, we are so thankful uh, for Laurel and Patrick, for Sydney and Gabriel, and for Steve and Shakina. We are so thankful that you have brought them thus far and you will never, ever leave them nor forsake them. Lord, we pray for everyone in the chat. We have so many people watching tonight, so many people who will watch. And Lord, we ask that out of your glorious riches, that you will continue to give us strength, that you will continue to give each of us discernment, that you will continue to help us to walk in love, to walk in you, to align ourselves so closely with you that your love works in us and through us and in our relationships, whatever the case may be, whether those are marriage relationships or family, familial relationships, um, work relationships, as we talked about last month, whatever it is, Lord, we pray that you would be with us, that you would continue to reveal yourself in us and through us and to us. Lord, we want to be so aligned with you that others will see you and glorify you. We thank you so much for your grace, for your mercy, for your loving kindness that is never failing. We are so thankful that your love is unfailing, that it will never be shaken. This is our prayer in the worthy name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, do me a favor, couples, just go ahead and give each other a kiss real quick. Leave. Thank you all so much. Um, that was so fun. I, I, I don't ask you to do that again. That was really good. Uh, but no, thank you all so much for being on here, for sharing your time, um, for giving us the wisdom that you have learned over the years. We appreciate it. We're going to say goodbye to you all. And as we hang on for a brief moment, um, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Steve, Jagina, Gabe, Sydney. Pleasure. Thank you. See you all. Um, so I'm going to hang on, Pastor Houston, Amber, Charles. Look at Lauren. She, where'd she come from? Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Charles was like, I'm going to get my wife. Exactly. I'm going to get my wife. Well, we were go. watching it together, you know. Oh, so, we, yeah. were watching yeah. it together. we were watching it together. Wow. Yeah. I feel bad. Let me call my husband. Up <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what did you get from it? Like, what was the, what were some standout things for you all? Yeah. I, I love the point that uh, Steve made about, like, you know, it's like little things. Cause I think like little things are always tied to like deeper meanings. Like mm -hmm. it's tied to tradition, it's tied to our values. It's tied to, you know, like our upbringing. So I love that point that like, it may seem small, but it's really not, you know? Mm. And I think you cause more conflict by making the other person feel like what they're feeling is small. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That hit me too. Yeah. yeah, I loved so many points. I right. loved especially what Sydney said about doing the inner work. And that doesn't mm -hmm. stop even when you're married. You have to keep doing that inner work and, um, you know, caring for your mental health. I loved mm -hmm. what Laurel said about grace. I mm -hmm. loved that um, how, mm -hmm. um, you know, forgive quickly. 
give grace. The same grace that is extended to you, you extend that out. And that yeah. is definitely uh, one of the keys to making relationships work. So I love that. Love it. Love it. Charles, Lauren. Now, yeah, Lauren, I, Lauren is Laurel's sister, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you know. Um, you all been married seven years. You said what? What stood out to you, or what stands out to you? Um, I really appreciated what um Laurel said about no deal breakers. Like that kind of hit me. Like because me. like in a world where you can get a divorce tomorrow if you feel like it for the slightest thing, if somebody farts in the bed, you can get a divorce. And it's like to work on everything to say like yeah. really like you know outside of, you know, domestic abuse and different things like that, like you've made this commitment to God first yeah. mm -hmm. and then to your spouse. So when you break it, you're breaking it to God. And if you're, mm -hmm. there was a lot of people in the chat talking about their, the importance of relationship with God. And mm -hmm. it's like, if we really value our relationship with God, we're really going to value our marriage. Mm. So that was big for me because it was just like, you know, when me and Charles argue and he leaves dirty shoes in front of the door and like, uh, you know, right. <laughs> sorry, <I'm not> <laughs> but like, you know, those kind of things, like, how am I working through it? Like, you yeah. know, Amber talked about that grace piece too. And it was just like, am I taking grace? God, God gives me grace. Mm. If I look at my relationship with him and the things he gives me, I need to give those things to my spouse. Oh so man, kind of that's, that's good. Out. That's good. And that, that hit me too, the no deal breakers. I hadn't really thought about that. I said, wow, mm -hmm. deal breaker should come before you get married. Before you get mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. That was that was mm -hmm. powerful. Charles, anything? I guess we've been married so long that we just got the same <laughs> <Y'all think alike. laughs> Yeah, because that's what I was going to say. The, 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 no, the yeah. no deal breakers was the first take for me as yeah. far as, you know, make your deal breakers come before you get married. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no in the back of your mind, well, she does this, I'm yeah. gone. You know, yeah. that's I thought that was a really good point. Um, yeah, that's good. And and God restores. Mm -hmm. so, so anybody who's watching, maybe you feel like your marriage is past the point of yeah. restoration. God restores. Yeah. yeah, he can do anything and create anything anew. So I believe yeah. that. Um, good stuff tonight, Pastor Houston. Amber, we have announcements. Charles, anybody? Yeah, um, we have a couple of announcements. First one is that this upcoming Sabbath, uh, in person worship, of course, and then. Following church, we have a symposium. We're going to learn about what we need to know about voting for 2024. Yeah. So that's happening from 2 to 4 p.m. or immediately following church. And so we invite everyone to tune in for that. Our social justice department has invited a special speaker. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So we encourage everyone to tune in. Um, and then... Um, on Saturday night, we're also having uh, our business meeting, which is at okay. six o'clock. So we encourage all of our members to come and participate and be a part of that. Um, have some really important things that we're gonna discuss as a church. And so that's going to be on Saturday evening at six o'clock and that's gonna be on Zoom, all right? So it gives everyone time, we got two hour gap from the symposium to get home, get relaxed, and then we'll hop on to our business meeting. And then next week, we have an amazing event that I'm going to pass it over to Loren to talk about. Yeah, and that's why she's here. Have you signed up for Beat the Buzzer? Did, did you just have a whistle? Did you? She did. I did. This, I'm so excited. Like, this is what we're going to be wearing. We got rugs. You know, I don't know if everybody knows about Wallin' Out and Minute to Win It. But, you know, this is going to be a combo of that. So if you love those game shows, you're going to love this one. Come out. Um 13 and up to participate and beat the buzzer. There'll be a bunch of games. It's going to be awesome. And if you're 13 and if you have kids that are 13 and under, we have a really cool party for them. Um, so they're invited to it's a church wide event for the whole family. And when I tell you, like, we got some really great game ideas, like it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm yeah. just saying, like, everybody, sh everybody should come out young, old, all age range. We're going to have candy. We're gonna have food. <laughs> We're gonna have games. Uh, and like, yeah. What else uh, do you need? So and it's in the it's in the chat. Out. The registration link. Yes, I see. The registration link is in the chat. So please sign up. Um, and it'll be right at the church in the upper room, um, that upstairs room, the youth lounge that we use, um, okay. utilize quite often. Yeah. So everybody knows yeah. where it's at. So April twentieth at seven p.m. Come on, okay. see, revision. Amen. We have everything. We have stuff for you spiritually. Emotionally, physically, politically, yeah. we got we got something for everybody. 
So just yeah. just come just be with us the rest of the month. We got we got so much stuff planned. If you don't already follow us on social media, please do that. Yeah. That's where you'll see like everything happening. It's so much and we love it. We're excited about it. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. Thank Share you. this with someone who just needs to see some happy marriages, who just need to see something fun about marriage, something exciting. Yeah. I, I love the fact you can get connected all these ways. All this stuff you can get connected. Okay. So yeah. um anything else I'm missing? That's it. That's it. That's awesome. it. Yeah. Thanks, all. Thanks so much for joining us. Do not miss next month. I'm putting in a plug for next month because we have uh, one of the foremost authorities on menopause mm. and how women can deal with menopause and, and how women can adjust and how men, what y'all need to know too about menopause. We have Dr. Lakeisha yeah. coming to us next month for the shift. You will not want to miss that. I promise you. But until then, have a great week. We're excited. Share this with someone. See you next time. See you next Good time. Night. Take care, everybody. Take care. Saturday. Um...